So we are moving forward with our program and um, our next speaker. So as I said, panel discussion is about how Georgia is adapting to uh, new strategic realities around it. And our next speaker is uh, Ambassador Archil Gegeshidze, former US Jordan ambassador to the United States, but also, as I said earlier, a uh, close friend of uh, Ambassador Levan Mikeladze, uh, former national security advisor to President Shevard Nadze. Last 30 years since the independence of Georgia, Archil was involved in many different, uh, almost, I mean, not almost, definitely all the major affairs of foreign relations uh, that Georgia was involved with. And so he's a definitely um, institutional and personal memory of, of what was happening with Georgian foreign affairs and international relations in the last 30 years. Archil, when you were asking question to Fiona, your mic was not, I mean, we could not hear you well, as well as we could hear Fiona. Can you make sure that you speak a little bit louder so that we can hear you well? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll make uh, several points on the implications of the uh, so-called the Second Nagorno-Karabakh War of uh, 2020 for both Georgia, the region, and the international community. But before proceeding to the uh, points, uh, I will add here that uh, so much has already been said and uh, written about this uh, that my observations uh, which I'm going to share with you now uh, in no way claim to be comprehensive, of course. So that there could be some uh, repetitions or, uh, or already known ideas uh, already <clears throat> aired by uh, others. So uh, I will start with the general implications for uh, the region. Uh, the first uh, point I would like to make is that uh, despite the, the fact that the uh, conflict was uh, uh, suspended, the fire of conflict was extinguished, extinguished uh, formally uh, by uh, the joint statement of uh, top officials of Russia, Azerbaijan, Armenia. It turns out that the uh, current status quo, albeit to varying degrees, still does not work for neither Azerbaijan nor for Armenia. Nevertheless, uh, at this time, both sides have to accept it uh, for various reasons, and accordingly, it should be presume that the conflict was once again frozen for an indefinite period until the next defrost. Uh, the next point is uh, a point about uh, 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 Russia as a benefactor of uh, the beneficiary of, uh, uh, of the outcomes uh, of the, uh, the war. First is that uh, Russia was able to step with the soldier boot on the land of Azerbaijan, the only state in the region that remained free of Russian military presence. Secondly, Russia managed to assume the role of the uh, situation manipulator uh, in the form of a peacemaker or peacekeeper, because on the one hand, uh, the degree of Armenia's dependence on Russia has increased significantly. And on the other hand, uh, for the first time, Azerbaijan found itself vulnerable to potential Russian provocation on its territory. And the third, Russia was able to marginalize the role of the Minsk group, that is the role of the West, and began to claim a leading role in terms of providing peace and security in the conflict zone. This was a heavy blow to Western institutions and diplomacy, especially uh, in a region where the Kremlin's propaganda has nurtured US skepticism by uh, perpetrating the image of the West as a passive, slow, and indecisive political agent. Uh, uh, next point is that Turkey has achieved its goal. It declared uh, its uh, intention to uh, influence the South Caucasus. For the first time, uh, Turkey was able to play an active role in defrosting the regional conflict and thus to secure its place among influential external players. In order to strengthen this status, Turkey came forward with uh, the initiative to create a platform of six, or uh, in other words, uh, three plus uh, three initiative with participation of Turkey, Russia, Iran, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Armenia. 
and thereby to promote the development and cooperation in the region. Probably uh, counting on its economic competitive advantages uh, within the framework of uh, proposed cooperation, uh, Turkey um, tries to play um, uh, to portray itself uh, as an already active uh, um, agent. Uh, as a, a regional player, Iran is not yet visible in, in the arena much, uh, although it has uh, the desire and the ambitions to become noticeable. It was uh, for a reason that already in January 2021, as part of his regional tour, the Iranian foreign minister traveled to the capitals of the platform six countries and tried to find its own niche uh, in potential emerging new realities in the region. Uh, now, uh, a few points about implications for the West. In the new context formed uh, in the South Caucasus, the role of the West is not almost is not visible. Azerbaijan has indicated that it is not going to cooperate with the Minsk group, especially with one of its co-chairs, France, the West is unlikely to be able to compete with Russia in terms of conflict peacekeeping. And for a number of reasons, uh, it will be extremely difficult for Paris and Washington to return to Minsk Group, uh, to return the Minsk Group to an active game. Despite the fact that unlike uh, the Trump times, Biden and Macron will probably be able to better coordinate their efforts on the international arena, uh, but uh, the events surrounding Nagorno-Karabakh are not a game where the West can outplay Russia or uh, where Russia will need the West as a partner. Uh, to compensate for uh, complete displacement from the Nagorno-Karabakh settlement, the West will have to concentrate on more promising zones of the South Caucasus. These are the Black Sea region, including Georgia with its conflicts, where Russia still has its colossal influence. With the support of the new US administration, I mean, Biden's administration, uh, the European Union, together with the UN and other uh, willing uh, mm, uh, benefactors, can start transforming the conflicts in Abkhazia and South Serbia, not settling because settlement is uh, out of sight at this point, but transforming the conflict in Abkhazia and South Serbia and thereby contribute to the creation of a positive dynamics in the region. Uh, here I see the uh, niche for uh, the Western efforts uh, in, 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 the, in the South Caucasus. Now implications for Georgia. The outcome of uh, war demonstrated that po power politics is back with renewed energy. The fate of the conflict was uh, decided not by diplomatic means, but by hard power. Success of a forceful way of restoring the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan may set a bad precedent, bad example for Georgian adherence of, so to say, waiting uh, for the right moment policy. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, there is a um, there is a widespread narrative in Georgia that uh, we have to exercise a strategic patience and uh, 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 at some point in the future. A Russian factor will inevitably change because of internal structural uh, difficulties within Russia. Uh, and then uh, the uh, conflicts in uh, uh, Abkhazia and South Ossetia will be easier to deal with. So uh, at this point, uh, this status quo is something which uh, plays in hands more uh, for Georgia than for Abkhazia or South Ossetia. Uh, for, for, to me, this is a, a wrong assumption. Uh, but uh, uh, for those who uh, adhere to this narrative, uh, uh, the president of forceful uh, uh, resolution of uh, the, this uh, issue of restoring territorial integrity of Azerbaijan may be inspiring. Uh, and uh, mm, I, I would expect that at some point in the future, this narrative may gain uh, additional momentum. Second point is that the president of forceful solution uh, to the problem of restoring territorial integrity of Azerbaijan uh, as well as the specific role of Russia in this process might, uh, on the one hand, intimidate the Abkhaz and South Ossetian sides, and on the other hand, make them doubt the longevity of strategic partnership with Russia. In such a state of mind, they may further distance themselves from Georgia, 
and become more compliant and malleable in relations uh, with Russia. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the next point is that the precedent of uh, Azerbaijan's successful military operations may serve as a lesson to military buildup in Georgia. Advanced military technologies and art of warfare, uh, warfare in mountainous terrain, had been the most important aspects of Nagorno-Karabakh war, and therefore Georgian military leaders, uh, I, I, I would suppose that we would set their sights on them in order to learn from this experience. Um, next point is that the appearance of end-to-end uh, -end transport corridor across the uh, territories of Ar Armenia and Azerbaijan, as it is envisaged in this in the trilateral uh, statement by the leaders of this uh, of uh, Russia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia, uh, uh, some think that may reduce the transit capabilities of Georgia as a whole. I would uh, disagree with this. Uh, an expensive energy corridor ensuring the transit of hydrocarbons from Caspian region to Turkey and further to the west has already been placed through Georgia. In addition, the baku tbilisi cars railway corridor, along which uh, freight trains from Turkey and to Russia and China have already passed, was put into operation. Armenia will continue to use the territory of Georgia for receiving Russian goods uh, through the Black Sea ports or the upper Lars border crossing point. Uh, because if you look at the map, this is the shortest route uh, from Armenia to Russia, then uh, rather than to, uh, through the, through the would-be corridor to Azerbaijan. Georgia will remain the main transit partner for land trade between Russia and Turkey. And hypothetically, it may happen that, on the contrary, the significance of Georgia's transit flow will even increase. For example, unblocking of transport communications between Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Turkey will create demand and a favorable atmosphere in the region for enacting the still blocked railway through Abkhazia and Transcaucasian highway called Transcam passing through the territory of South Ossetia. Let me remind the audience that in the in late 1990s and early 2000s, it was the Transcam, this uh, highway through South Ossetia that provided for a mutually beneficial trade route for Georgians and South Ossetians who have put to good use this opportunity for developing joint businesses and cooperation. Now, implications for international organizations. The very fact that the war and its results, uh, as interpreted by the Russian and Azerbaijani sides, is a consequence of incapacity of uh, OEC means group uh, format. Uh, the outbreak of conflict with the subsequent suspension, mainly by uh, the Russian mediation, practically marginalized the Minsk group and severely damaged the reputation of the OSCE. We already talked about OSCE with Fiona. It is believed that the, the West was uh, ousted from the conflict settlement process due to either its deliberate inaction or objective uh, inability. The only party to the conflict which is willing to bring the Minsk group back into the process is Armenia, but, uh, but Armenia is uh, the most lightweighted stakeholder uh, at this point of time. Uh, uh, and the last point is that uh, the events around Nagorno-Karabakh have shown that it will not be possible to keep the protracted conflict in a frozen state of uh, state of uh, state for a long time. In the worst case scenario, the conflicts. Uh, will uh, explode again, even uh, if not for a long time, but it will surely explode, bringing casualties and, and destruction. Therefore, international organizations, in particular those working on conflicts of Georgia, should adjust their involvement strategy in the direction of conflict transformation, uh, which means improvement of people-to-people -people, um, relationships, uh, uh, trade, uh, joint businesses uh, and uh, free, uh, free movement of people across the conflict divide, as it is in other transformed conflicts, such as uh, Moldova, Transnistria, or uh, Cyprus. And, um, uh, and uh, whereas the political settlement of conflicts is uh, off the table at this point uh, for the foreseeable future, this is the only alternative that could lead to positive changes in relations between the parties to the conflict and thus avoidance of armed clash.
I will stop here and we'll look forward to any question and comment. Thank you, Archil. Thank you very much. Uh, Stephen, now floor is yours. Uh, please try to stay in 10 minutes so that we'll have time, a little bit of time left uh, for questions afterwards. Um, and same question, request okay. to you as well. All right. Well, thanks, Mamuka. And, and thanks, thanks to the, the Van Mikaladze Foundation for this. I really enjoyed uh, listening to Fiona. And it's a you know, great opportunity to get together and discuss Georgia's current problems, many of which, of course, are primarily domestic rather than international, but obviously both of them very much connected, I think, as Fiona was pointing out, you know, regarding the um, regarding United States and um, its internal problems and how they relate to its role in the rest of the world. Uh, Georgia is very much in the same position, of course. Um, so let me just talk a little bit then about Georgia's uh, relationship with re re regional powers nowadays. Um, and I'm going to just give you a little bit of uh, historical context, not much. Um, so Georgia, with some exceptions, uh, in the, maybe the 11th and the 12th centuries, has always been a small power subject to imperial interference. Um, the Byzantines, the Persian Safavids, the Ottoman Turks, the Russian Empire in the late 18th century, of all shaped Georgia's foreign policy as well as its borders. But despite Georgia's geographic vulnerability squeezed between powerful empires seeking dominance in a strategically valuable region, Georgia survived as an independent state until the 19th century, but not by winning battles, rather by dipl diplomatic maneuvers. That means foreign patronage, alliances, uh, what international relations uh, specialists call bandwagoning, balancing, and hedging, which is what Georgia has mostly done with Russia over the last three decades. Um, this did not exclude wars, but force has never really been a useful instrument um, in Georgia's foreign policy. Georgia's small size and presence in a difficult neighborhood has led to multiple vulnerabilities, such as the manipulation by external powers of internal conflicts and unsettled borders. But small states like Georgia are not just victims of international systems and aggressive neighbors. They can present themselves as useful partners in a borderland region where empires and modern states have always sought strategic advantages. Georgia has been able to do so for much of the last 30 years too. The country may be small and peripheral, but it is, as my colleagues Cornel, Corneli Kakachia and Tracy German in a, in a recent volume that, that we co-edited called Georgia's Foreign Policy in the 21st Century, Challenges for a Small State, um, where they emphasize um, that Georgia is not without agency. Um, so this is evident in Georgia's relationships with all neighboring regional powers, such as Iran, Turkey, Russia, and the EU. This does not mean Georgia always plays the game well or comes out on top, but Georgia has used what advantages it has to push its own significance forward to regional powers. Let me mention a few of them. Firstly, there's the advantage of geography, not denying, of course, that geography has negative consequences for Georgia. Georgia has promoted its economic significance to all four regional powers as a vital linchpin in the transport network, networks that, that cross Caucasia. For Turkey, for example, that means strategic oil and gas pipelines that not only enhance Turkey's ambition as an energy hub, but reinforce its aspirations for regional hegemony in Azerbaijan and Central Asia. Iran, as, as Archil pointed out, has less economic engagement with Georgia, but Georgia's offers of railway and road links across Armenia and Georgia to European markets have rekindled Iran's attention to a region where for centuries it had played a dominant role. Iran for Georgia is a potential energy partner, a tourist investor, but just as important is its potential for balancing Russian power in the region, particularly after the second Nagorno-Karabakh war. Secondly, I would argue that Georgia has shown real skill in drawing NATO into its orbit, despite NATO's rejection of Georgian membership and Russia's fierce hostility. Georgia has offered itself as a vital military power to the US and NATO in Iraq and Afghanistan and is the most integrated non-member state in NATO despite the absence of formal membership. 
this demonstrated military commitment to Western interests abroad has strengthened Georgia's autonomy from Russian security threat and demonstrated its reliability to Western strategic interests. As tensions with Russia or Iran have increased, Georgia's value as a strategic ally to NATO has gone up. Though getting NATO to commit to action on Georgia's behalf, of course, is, is another thing. Thirdly, the visit of Charles Michel, president of the European Council to Georgia in March and April of this year to broker an agreement between warring political parties was surely a sign of Georgia's importance to the EU as a democracy worth preserving. In the EU's Eastern Partnership, both Georgia and Ukraine have become democratic symbols of resistance to Russia's aggressive foreign policy. Georgia has managed to carve a space for itself as a democracy in a largely non-democratic region that must be preserved. Maintaining that reputation is Georgia's best source of security. And that's why it has to expand democracy at home rather than diminish it. The strategy then, which echoes the case made by the leaders of the Democratic Republic of Georgia in 1918 to 21, when it offered the use of its strategic railway and its potential as a middle wall against Bolshevik expansion, is to make Georgia an indispensable Western ally in the region, to provide economic rewards for foreign partners, including Iran and Turkey, and to demonstrate its reliability as a junior partner in the West's strategic concerns in the region. Russia, of course, is hostile to such a strategy. That is why it is employing a hybrid strategy towards Georgia, encouraging polarization, political rifts, and an anti-Western church leadership. Fortunately, this has not changed Georgia's foreign policy direction because Georgians as a whole, as polls indicate, strongly identify with Europe and the United States. This is based on long-standing cultural identity with Europe, and it is a feature of Georgian society that the US and the EU should not risk losing due to inaction or inattention. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you, Stephen. We'll uh, probably have some comments and conversation later on, 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 uh, on some of the points, but uh, Julia, floor is yours. Julia is a, I mean, probably uh, Archil and uh, Stephen have, probably need no introduction to this group of audience, uh, at least most of them, but Julia is a young and the rising star of expert community and uh, in, uh, who focuses on Black Sea security and, and Georgia included. And uh, it's great to have you here, uh, Julia, for this uh, event today. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you, Mamuka, um, for um, hosting this and uh, for for inviting me. It's it's really an honor to um, speak to this and um, and to try to contribute to um, the strategic thinking. I know you, Ma Mamuka, has I have asked me to talk about Georgia in a regional context. So that's what I, I will try to do um, very briefly. I'll um, try to keep my remarks as short as possible so we can have a conversation with, um, with the participants as well. Um, in my understanding, have, looking at kind of zooming in for a moment into Georgia in the regional context, Georgia is in a particularly difficult position um, because Georgia's strategic culture and foreign policy orientation and foreign policy overall are in survival mode. And that's something that um, Georgia does not have a choice in. It was enforced on it, but it makes it particularly difficult to think strategically and to act strategically from that vantage point. Um, the, survive, the survival mode is nothing new and has been enforced, as we all know, by Russia upon Georgia all the way over the last few decades, but with a high point in 2008. And ever since, Georgia has had to fear repeated Russian aggression. And though it has um, so far been spared in terms of direct aggression, indirect insecurity in Georgia's immediate neighborhood has further enforced um, and, and added to this um, survival mode. The problem is that for countries, just like for humans, it's very difficult to think constructively and creatively when in survival mode, 
Georgia's situation is made worse by the fact that it is a small country and um, for small countries on the international arena, we know that we have less options because they can project less power. And that's the conversation that we keep, um, we keep having today as well. At the regional security um, level and in the regional security environment, indeed it is very challenging. Simply put, the Black Sea has become one of the most insecure environments in the world. Alas, the West has been very slow to understand Russian aggression in our region for what it is. Alas, Georgia's invasion in 2008 um, did not create the political wake-up um, signs or wake-up call for the West to step in and prioritize Black Sea security as it should have. And this, of course, adds furthermore to um, the survival mode of Georgia, alas. Um, since 2014, however, Russia's continued aggressions in Eastern Europe militarily and politically um, have determined um, the West um, to turn slowly but continuously to the region and security as well have Russian aggressions in the West. And it is mine and others here job to ensure that the West steps up furthermore to protect key democratic allies such as Georgia. Um, but in the meantime, there are really three, the way I see it, three major new sources of regional insecurity that threaten Georgia. The first is Russia's power projection south and its military presence in Syria, which indirectly further has added to Black Sea insecurity since 2015. The second one is Russia's continued aggression against Ukraine with direct impact on regional insecurity. And as um, uh, other distinguished panelists um, today have mentioned, um, the effective closing of the Azov um, Sea next door from Georgia, the influence that Russia tries to play in energy security in the region um, with ample repercussions on regional and individual security and the permanent and temporary military buildups on sea and land directly have affected um, Georgia's security or insecurity. Um, the spring and fall military buildups this year um, are primary examples um, of, of exactly that. But they also serve to keep uh, Western attention um, on the region that Georgia can um, find ways to benefit from. And I'll get to that in a second. But finally, the third source of insecurity as amply discussed um, here, so I won't go into details, is the Nagorno-Karabakh 2020 conflict and its consequences that we're still um, following. Borders have changed with the West once more standing by and watching. And most importantly for Georgia, it is now almost entirely encircled by Russian troops. Um, and, and this of course is by far the worst source of immediate insecurity um, for Georgia. And this is also the source of Georgia's current political security conundrum, which translates into Georgia's future foreign policy orientation, specifically what Georgia should do about the three plus three format. And generally, um, should Georgia reassess its relationship, as Yuma Muka pointed out, with regional partners in the absence of more Western support, because that's kind of the, the subtext of, of this. My answer to this is that Georgia should um, reconsider some and not all of its foreign pol policy orientation, but obviously, as, as Fiona Hill pointed out, keep the national interest in mind at all times, particularly when it comes to democratic consolidation and the role that Georgia has been playing as a democratic ally in the region. Um, Azerbaijan and Turkey are regional powers Georgia should continue to build its cooperation with, most importantly, I think here Turkey is, has been supportive of, of Georgian national security and um, the future of, of uh, Georgia and NATO. And Georgia in exchange can play a key role as facilitator between Turkish and US interests. Um, the United States really, in my assessment, needs facilitators um, in this role and Georgia really is the ideal one in the region. Um, and, but when it comes to Russia, of course, Georgia knows that national interest prevails and that negotiation with Moscow is never fair in outcomes. That's something that we've known now for many, many years. It's obvious, but it really is what it comes down to in, in this bilateral relationship. And then um, because Mamuka asked me to talk about next steps in terms of regional security and, uh, and insecurity, here's something that um, 
I said kind of yesterday um, in a in a conversation that I've had in my country, Romania, but which applies even more to Georgia because of the deep insecurity and high threat perception that we have in the Black Sea vis-a-vis Russian aggression. We, the Georgians, Romanians, Ukrainians tend to think um, and are forced to think in traditional military security terms. At the same time, what is missing from the region is more Western and particularly more um, European involvement. Both the EU um, define and, and the Biden administration define a security along um, in, in the military terms, along with all the other dimensions like economic, energy, social, political, environmental security. And so to attract more Western presence and bring more European security to the region and to Georgia, we need um, in the Black Sea region to further broaden our definition of security, um, which undoubtedly Georgia has already been doing over the last several years um, in terms of building non-military security proposals and clear proposed measures that European partners that are reluctant when it comes to military security in relationship to Russia can actually invest in. Undoubtedly, um, we have already started, but more can be done to foster regional strategic partnerships and to attract European investments in energy, social and environmental security in, in the Black Sea region. And then finally, my very last point, as um, again, Fiona Hill pointed out earlier, the development of um, strategic regional partnerships of Georgia is essential. Romania, Poland, Ukraine are great allies of Georgia. Moldova and the Baltics are too. And in this context, um, what we've seen um, this year in terms of the trilateral Moldova, Ukraine, Georgia um, cooperation in bringing them closer to the EU is something that I interpret as very encouraging and an excellent start for building a stronger voice, um, a common stronger voice in relationship to Western partners, particularly Europeans. And with that, I'll close and um, perhaps we can open up the discussion. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you uh, all. Uh, before I turn to uh, maybe, uh, first of all, whatever the time we left, uh, there are Q&A um, function on Zoom and some of the audience could ask questions to our speakers. I just wanted to make one brief comment and then maybe I'll ask first question so that we can initiate this conversation. But my comment is that uh, what Steven said, and he mentioned it about, uh, he made the point about um, the church being anti-Western. And a lot of discussions internally in Georgia uh, on many issues, almost all issues, are considered or seen from geopolitical prism. You do one thing and you are anti-Western, pro-Russian, pro or, or vice versa. I think church in Georgia is conservative, not anti or Western or uh, pro-Russian or anything like that. There are people in church who are pro-Russian, I'm sure about that. There are people in, 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 in church who are anti-Western. But overall, this is a conservative institution which has different kind of values that uh, definitely um, other institutions have. And for them being, uh, let's say, anti certain things doesn't necessarily make them uh, anti Western or, or pro Russian. There are people in the United States who have same beliefs and or, or even, even Catholic Church. So that's this, this that's way I see, it, but I don't want to go into that, that discussion and conversation. My, my first question, maybe to all all participants is that okay we had a very very kind of substantive discussion on many different issues and we outlined what are the challenges and uh, but <laughs> key question that remains for us uh, is uh, I mean, being small being surrounded by major powers with their own interests or smaller powers who are in conflict with each other uh, so that affects Georgia. Now, uh, in, in the prism of what's happening in Ukraine, between Russia and Ukraine and Western reaction to that. So what is the Georgia's, in your, your view, and try to answer this question in, in maybe one, one and a half minutes. So what is the, what should Georgia's position should be at this stage? Should be proactively engaged in some kind of uh, uh, initiatives that that uh, uh, that makes Georgia somehow visible in this in this conflict, or should Georgia remain 
uh, kind of moderate in its in its kind of reaction to the conflict and and uh, and stay sort of below the radars. There is lots of again discussion and and this discussion in, uh, internally is kind of translated into geopolitical position of Georgia, which I think is is unjustified. It's it's more about uh, security of Georgia and thinking about different ways of approaching this 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 challenge that Georgia is facing, but its own challenges. Again, it doesn't exclude uh, some some uh, sympathies and and, uh, and the preferences among some uh, some forces in Georgia. But in general, question. Uh, let's start with Archil. So, what what Georgia's uh, position should be in this in this context? Well. Um... Ensuring the security for a small country has always been a challenge, especially uh, given Georgia's uh, in a fault line geopolitical or geographic location. Uh, our history is a history of, uh, of uh, uh, trying, to, uh, uh, trying to survive uh, from, uh, from those challenges which is this location uh, would pose Georgia at all times of our history. And even after the Cold War, unfortunately, the uh, issue of Russia uh, has not been solved. Uh, the the uh, aggressive Russia's I mean, stance is something which uh, still defines uh, Georgia's uh, security paradigm. Uh, because uh, when Georgia was uh, um, was appearing uh, as an or was again in independence, uh, the the major idea, uh, and it was a consensual idea. And uh, I think still is uh, a consensual idea was uh, uh, to regain independence and how to regain independence to, to preserve, to protect that independence from aggressive Russia. So this security uh, prism and uh, Russia as a major uh, primary threat, security threat to Georgia uh, prevails uh, here in the society, in the thinking uh, and uh, in, in the politics. Mm, uh, so, uh, so when when you ask uh, what a small country like Georgia uh, could do uh, other than uh, other than security uh, realm, then uh, I, my answer would be that Georgia should do everything possible in any possible areas uh, in that I mean, environment, uh, culture, sports, whatever. But in terms of security, it's uh, you know, Georgia has to strike a delicate balance. Uh, yes, uh, Georgia should uh, keep on uh, keep on uh, uh, track. I mean, building on track or, or the path of uh, uh, institutional integration into the uh, European and Atlantic institutions. Uh, but uh, this uh, trajectory of moving there uh, should be very uh, well uh, balanced, based based on the preparedness of our strategic partners to hedge our uh, risky trajectory. Because what we are seeing and witnessing uh, in Ukraine and yesterday, uh, yesterday's Zoom meeting between Biden and Putin allegedly was around, I mean, in, 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 uh, Russia's, uh, uh, Russia's request to provide uh, legally binding guarantees that NATO would not expand to the East. Uh, so otherwise uh, Russia would invade. So uh, we already experienced uh, the, this, in, uh, unfortunately, in 2008. Uh, yes, uh, the West came to our rescue, but it was a, a big a conflict, uh, a crisis management stage. Unfortunately, uh, our relationship with the West, the existing relationship, then at that time existing relationship with the West, they did not uh, provide hard security guarantees for Georgia. That's why, that's why we, uh, mm, we experienced uh, those tragic five days in 2008. Uh, so, uh, uh, and until now, we are in security limbo. We are out of security umbrellas, being that NATO or other security arrangements so, or any any bilateral relationship with any country, including the United States, does not provide hard security guarantees. Uh, but uh, mm, this does not mean that we should not be aspiring to uh, attain uh, that status. Uh, but uh, trajectory should be uh, well calculated and the policy should be uh, pragmatic. I think, uh, I think uh, mostly, mostly Georgia uh, rises up to the challenge and uh, its, its policies are more or less, uh, um, more or less hedged from this list. But again, now nothing can be ruled out. Stephen?
Thank you, Mamuka. Um, I, I just like to push back a little bit on my comment about the church. Um, no, you're right. Absolutely. The, 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 the Georgian Orthodox Church shares a very conservative position with the Russian Orthodox Church, the Bulgarian Orthodox Church, and, 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 and many similar ones. But, um, you know, the, the Georgian Church has tried to influence government policy. It, it has tried to uh, even influence um, uh, Georgian foreign policy. Um, so, you know, uh, when I say it's anti-Western, you know, the church has become involved in, in these debates about Georgia's relationship with the West on a political level. And that's why I would, I would frame it not just as conservative. I think it's a politicized church as well um, that in many cases has taken a position against um, the values of Europe. Um, you know, I, I, I do agree with you, Mamoka. I mean, I, we've heard statements from Ilya II that suggest that, you know, he's very uh, positive about Georgia getting closer to the European Union and so on. Um, but, you know, there is a, a very large um, and powerful group in, in the Georgian church that um, is, is deliberately taking a political and anti-Western position. So that, that, that's where I was coming, coming from on that one. Regarding Georgia's um, re reaction to what's happening in, in Ukraine, um, you know, I, I, I think that uh, Georgia, I, I would probably be a little more aggressive about it than, than Archil. I think that, um, you know, the Ukraine, Georgia's relationship with Ukraine is absolutely vital. Um, Yulia talked about the trilateral relationship between Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia, and um, you know this is this is one aspect of of Georgia's um, regional strategy, um, building um, elements of, of security for, for for all three st three states through some sort of cooperation. Uh, you know, I, I think this is a this is a, this is a time for Georgia to state its solidarity with Ukraine. It's in a very similar position, of course, as Ukraine. Um, uh, and um, I, I wouldn't like to see any hedging on, on this particular issue because it's so crucial. Um, both the United States and, and the European Union understand finally, uh, you know, the importance of, of, of what, what's happening in Ukraine and, 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 and how to um, oppose Russia more aggressively. Uh, I don't think this is a I mean, I know Georgia is, is a small state and is much more fragile positioned in some ways, but I don't think this is the time uh, for Georgia to hedge its bets on, on Ukraine. I think it's, a, it's a, a very important question for Georgia to, to express its, uh, its solidarity right now. Julia. Thank you, Mamuka. It's a very difficult question um, because um, as we've seen from Archil and Stephen, the best way um, is sort of where to strike the balance. I guess that's, that's more how we can think about your question. Um, but, but I do think um, that what I would recommend um, and what I do recommend to, um, to Black Sea Western allies in the region is to show more solidarity. Going back, it was really interesting for me to see um, when I asked Fiona Hill a bit earlier um, what she recommends um, Georgia should do in the region. She referred to something that I truly believe in um, and that I see here in Washington as being perceived as such under this administration and previous ones, um, that um, uh, we have been preaching, not to Georgia, because um, it has been doing uh, more than, than expected, but to other countries in the region like mine and Romania, and, and Ukraine for being very slow after Georgia too, we have been sort of preaching and lecturing um, without any malintent that there should be more solidarity, there should be more cooperation, and then the, uh, and that the West is watching. So find, looking the, uh, at the right measures that do not entail too much risk for Georgia as a small country, but show support um, to Ukraine matter a lot um, and are being um, seen and are partially being seen as missing in the general regional environment, unlike in the Baltic Sea where um, actors are far more in solidarity and hence build a stronger voice that we see here reflected in much more of a stronger narrative and measures on the ground um, in, uh, uh, for the Baltic Sea than for the Black Sea. This is kind of what we've been missing in the region. So I think 
um, uh, showing solidarity with messages and with clear um, uh, uh, proposals of cooperation is an important issue. And though I am a true believer in NATO and the European Union, we have seen over the last few decades that they can fail at times in the Black Sea. So in the absence of a clear promise of EU and NATO membership um, for Georgia in the immediate um, in the immediate uh, time, future time, um, Georgia obviously has been doing that, but should consider doing more in terms of building strategic partnerships individually. And this goes back to um, uh, to two aspects and with that I'll close. Um, one is um, looking at Romania, for instance, in this case, it's a good example. Um, Romania is what I call holy trinity of um, foreign and security policy priorities. This first comes the United States, then comes NATO, and then comes the EU when it comes to security policy, which um, is um, something that um, it has built based on the responsiveness of these three actors to Black Sea um, regional security. And so in the absence of um, guarantees on a, on a multilateral level, the only choice that we have, whether we talk about Georgia or we talk about Romania, who should do more um, in, in building strategic partnerships is to um, continue to build these out with the United States at the forefront because it is the most undoubtedly present um, Western security source in the region, but with other actors to, to sort of um, build their support and increase their presence to add to Black Sea security and counter Russian aggression. Thanks. Thank you, Yulia. I think uh, I wanted to ask something else, but now your, your last comment actually uh, led me to change a little bit my focus and ask our speakers, all three of you maybe, uh, about the uh, US-Georgian relationship, where it, uh, it should go from where it stands now. That Ambassador David Bakradze will share his views on that later, and uh, he's also views on, on, on uh, how where he sees uh, evolution of these relationships, but I think from uh, all three of you uh, speakers of this panel, maybe your perspective because you you touched very important issue. You know, this Romania had this luxury of being member of NATO, which protected it to, from some of the security challenges that Georgia is facing, which allowed to deepen relationship with the United States on bilateral military level to the degree that it, it has this uh, this this three tier sort of relationship to uh, to build georgia has no luxury of that level but georgia has a luxury of since 2002 being placed for training and presence of american troops and that's not many countries that's what something that many countries do not have and of course georgia deserved it by its own contribution to all the military operations and so forth but uh, and, and clearly this is one of the avenues that needs to continue, but uh, Archil, Steven and Yulia, maybe just again very shortly, uh, where you see US-Georgian relationship going forward. This is just one aspect of it, but uh, other than that, what should be the priority for, uh, for two, two countries to focus on? Who, who starts? You. Okay. Um, so on one hand, uh, the big question, and on the other hand, it's easy to answer. And so when I was uh, being appointed as a resident, the journalists would ask me, what would be your priorities in Washington as an ambassador? And I would, my, my answer was that to uh, reap as many benefits uh, from the cooperation of the United States in all possible areas as possible for a small country like Georgia is. I didn't mean only just security. I didn't mean just only political relationship. But education, science, uh, healthcare, uh, you name. So this is a huge. The uh, uh, United States is a huge resource for Georgia's development in all these uh, areas. And uh, for example, uh, this uh, multi-billion program of, of elimination of hepatitis C in Georgia, uh, around fifteen billion dollar worth program it is. So if compared to U.S. investments in Georgia's economy, then this fifteen million billion dollars would over over I mean, kind of overweight those investments in Georgia's economy. So what I'm trying to say that this is only one example. How much can we get from this friendly 
relationship and partnership uh, uh, with the United States uh, for our um, um, for our development purposes. Uh, if uh, again coming back to uh, security, then uh, you mentioned Mamuka that yes, uh, uh, Georgia hosts that very unique program since 2002 on uh, on uh, training the Georgian troops and so far, to my knowledge, uh, uh, some 13 or 14,000 troops have been trained uh, through these programs, which is I mean, very important uh, for uh, for us, uh, given our size and location. Uh, uh, but uh, in terms of uh, political backing of, uh, of, um, of, of, of strengthening Georgian security, then uh, I would expect and I would wish that the United States plays a more active role in uh, building consensus within uh, uh, North Atlantic Alliance on Georgia's at least getting met, not membership, but getting met. Uh, and uh, the United States has always been supporting uh, uh, Georgia's me even membership, not just met, but membership, but to play a role of a leader to build that consensus it would be something which uh, uh, would be uh, good uh, for Georgia. Uh, we uh, once experienced a very uh, energetic uh, um, effort on the part of uh, US government uh, and personally the president in 2008, when then president really was fighting at the summit in Bucharest and made a summit uh, that Georgia and Ukraine would get met. Since then, we have never, never seen uh, that's the main energy in US uh, support on a multilateral basis, neither during Obama administration nor in Trump, and neither now. So uh, it would be it would be very much appreciated if the uh, United States starts playing that role. Maybe maybe it still would be difficult to uh, to uh, persuade Germany and other skeptical countries to provide Georgia and Ukraine map, but uh, still still. Uh, uh, this attempt would uh, uh, would be worthy, and uh, maybe maybe it would uh, succeed. Uh, secondly, Julia um, uh, mentioned that uh, uh, it is uh, very important that uh, this year uh, these three countries of the region, Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia, uh, began getting together, and um, they, they on, the, on the highest level, um, the leaders of the countries uh, already met, and there are some. Uh, intentions to uh, further develop um, this uh, cooperation uh, uh, in so-called association trio, uh, association trio, which is not formally recognized by European Union. And they are skeptical at this point uh, to recognize this uh, trio, this uh, trilateral, uh, trilateral attempt of cooperation of Ukraine, Georgia, and uh, uh, Moldova formally as they did, for example, in the in case of Visegrad uh, or um, Baltic Council. Council. Uh, so we have to get there. And if the United States uh, would advocate uh, uh, with uh, Europe that uh, these, these three countries uh, get that uh, uh, status, would be also very much helpful uh, for us. Uh, and, uh, and on a bilateral basis to continue with uh, those exercises, those, those training programs, uh, and uh, also providing uh, providing uh, um, other other uh, important uh, military equipment, not just the javelins, but some others, to uh, raise the price tag for Russia uh, in case of future uh, unfriendly most against Georgia. Thank you, Archil. Stephen? Um, so, of course, the US-Georgia partnership, and partnership, I think, should be the word we use because it's a two-way street, and the United States has certainly benefited from its partnership with Georgia uh, in the past. Um, you know, thinking about uh, the uh, networks of, of, of oil uh, pipelines and so on, which was central to Clinton's um, um, strategy at that time to find um, alternatives to dependence on, on Russia for, for oil and gas. Um, and, um, and, and of course, the Northern Distribution Network, um, where, where Georgia was an important partner in, 
in helping uh, the US get its supplies to Afghanistan. But I, I think that, you know, um, security is, is, the, is the question, you know, what, what, what do we mean by that? And I mean, Archil has emphasized the military aspects, obviously very important, but um, I, I would like to see the US thinking about security um, you know, in terms of what I talked about in, in my, my, my uh, little speech, I guess, uh, about the importance of democracy, which the U.S. has already um, emphasized. You know, this, this, is, um, this is extremely important to Georgia's survival as a focus of Western attention. If, if, if it slips back and, and, and becomes, um, you know, something else other than um, an aspiring democratic state, you know, uh, then, then the, the West will lose interest, essentially. So, you know, democracy is a very central part of, of Georgia's um, security, as is the economy. You know, again, um, we, we can think about the U.S. Um, supplying military uh, arms and, and training, all very important, no doubt. But, you know, the economy is just a massive security problem for Georgia. Uh, and, um, you know, when you've got... 30 to 40 percent, despite what the official statistics say of uh, um, unemployment, especially high among youth in Georgia, you know, you're going to you're going to face instabilities, frequent instabilities in, in, in Georgian politics, as we've seen. So, you know, I, one of the questions in the chat was about um, Biden's uh, B3W, you know, his build back better globally, um, you know, to help uh, developing countries establish better infrastructure, better, um, better economies. And, and that's where I would like to see the U.S., uh, if Biden is, is genuinely thinking in those terms um, of, of um, support and help for Georgia. Um, you know, Georgia faces very particular problems as a small country. Um, uh, you know, it's not particularly competitive uh, compared to um, East European countries, you know, like Romania or Bulgaria or Turkey, indeed. But, um, you know, there are some very important basic infrastructural um, investments that could be made, um, you know, investments um, in, 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 in not just in, you know, providing great figures for GDP growth, but, but actually seeing outcomes in terms of employment uh, for, for, for Georgians. You know, this this is this is what will give the Georgian government stability and, and greater legitimacy, and with it, security. And um, you know that that's where I would like to see uh, U.S. placing its emphasis. Thank you, Stephen. Julia, just one minute, maybe, and we'll move. Very to short. Um, I can only try to add to what um, Stephen and Archil already um, said. And, and try to add a little bit to the two dimensions. Um, and again, Mamuka, you ask a question where you would know the answer better than me, but um, I'll do my best. Um, in terms of military um, and going back to the NATO discussion, uh, membership action plan or not, um, what Georgia can consider and what the United States is sort of expecting from Georgia is to um, build in um, or ask concrete asks in terms of what, um, what um, Georgia needs in military capabilities from the United States and from NATO, and the United States is the one that can make it happen. So now we're preparing for the strategic concept, the new strategic concept of NATO. I recently wrote an article about this at the Middle East Institute about how Georgia can um, consider um, building its proposal with, um, uh, with support from key allies such as Romania, Poland and Turkey within NATO, but mostly the United States to get at least a little bit closer. Um, so that would mean a partnership 2.0 um, for Georgia and for Ukraine, but particularly for Georgia as the, uh, the non-member state that is most integrated with a clear package of asks because Georgia is a small country that's a lot more affordable. So that's something um, uh, on the military side that can be considered. And then on the economic side, um, Mamuka and I had several discussions about it. Um, I think here the Three Cs initiative is key and we've been doing our best with our modest voices to push um, the Three Cs initiative closer to the Black Sea, there's a lot more that can be done, but the United States over the last two years has taken significant initiative in that. 
that is security in a larger sense, back to my initial point of not just military, but economy, economy and energy and digitalization, where the Black Sea is missing and where, again, key regional allies such as Ukraine, such as Romania, have also a national interest in bringing the others in, not just EU territory. Um, so that's something that um, a lot more can be done there. And the ideal state uh, would be for Georgia to be fully integrated into the Three Seas Initiative and profit and benefit from, um, from this initiative for regional and national development in critical infrastructure and more. Thank you, Julia, uh, and uh, thanks to all panelists. Now it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce to uh, you all and to our audience, uh, Ambassador David Bakradze, who is uh, representing Georgia in uh, a very capable way for the last um, five years now, I think. And uh, let's hear, uh, I'm sure he has some reflections on yesterday's conversation and also some, some reflections on, on uh, what we discussed today. Um, and um, so, Ambassador, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you very and, and much. For, uh, for, 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 I'm sorry, for last, last point, while we have uh, less number of people listening now, then when we started, it's still uh, this conversation is recorded, so there will be possibility to share these views to our audience, larger audience going forward. Sorry, Ambassador. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Mamuka. Uh, I want to thank uh, you, Archil, our dearest Tina, of course, for keeping these events uh, so relevant uh, to the developments around Georgia and globally, something that Levan cared so uh, so much, and and uh, we miss him uh, dearly, of course. The developments uh, in the region, the uh, tensions created by Russia at the border of Ukraine over the course of last several weeks, uh, as well as the last two days, uh, with the high level diplomatic efforts, uh, show the. Uh, the crisis that uh, we all try to avert uh, in the region. Um, on this regard, I think uh, we still have to uh, wait uh, for the outcomes of the conversation that was held yesterday. Uh, but uh, one thing on our uh, part is very clear. Georgia has uh, very openly and unambiguously has expressed solidarity from the day one to our partners in Ukraine. Uh, it was uh, voiced very clearly by the Minister of Foreign Affairs in the uh, OSC uh, Ministerial, in the NATO Ministerial, which Ukrainian and Georgian foreign ministers attended. This is something that is very openly uh, voiced by uh, the delegation of the Georgian parliament, which is visiting Washington this week. And uh, this demonstrates uh, the, the gravity of the situation and, and how we see uh, the, the perspectives uh, that may, uh, that uh, these developments may lead to. One thing is very clear, Georgia remains uh, the most uh, loyal and strong partner of the United States and generally the West to protect our uh, shared values, our common interests in the wider region. And uh, on most of the issues that, uh, basically all the issues that was uh, discussed during this very interesting and, and uh, fruitful uh, discussion, I want to thank all the participants, of course, uh, starting with Fiona, very insightful, uh, very eye-opening, as always, uh, discussion. I want to thank Stephen, Julia, the Friends of Georgia, and on, to reflect on some of the major issues that were, that were touched upon uh, during this uh, discussion. The developments in Afghanistan, of course, Georgia has over the years demonstrated its commitment uh, to the global cause and global efforts, uh, but not only during the, uh, our presence in the international missions, but uh, also after the withdrawal from Afghanistan when Georgia has uh, played the role of the hub during the evacuation. Uh, of course, uh, the three plus three format was mentioned, which we all see is designed uh, to sideline West from our region. 
And in this regard, Georgia has been uh, very crystal clear in this regard that we, as much as we generally deeply believe there is no alternative to dialogue, to negotiations in attaining peace and stability. However, it is uh, less feasible uh, until the Russian Federation takes concrete steps in terms of the escalation of Georgian regions uh, and respect to the international law and order. Georgia sees no place in this uh, format. Of course, uh, with regards to the developments in our direct uh, neighborhood and uh, uh, and uh, in the aftermath of the of the Karabakh war. Uh, first of all, I think it should be mentioned that it is very unfortunate that Georgia continues to live with the consequences of the 2008 war. Uh, and uh, the conflict in Georgia represents, I think, a serious challenge uh, for the global, uh, for the regional and global uh, security architecture. Uh, with the situation in the occupied uh, regions uh, deteriorating uh, every day. Uh, but in our region, uh, we continue to face many challenges, which are political, economic, security, pandemic, just to name the few. And altogether, of course, very uh, affects uh, the very fragile situation. In this uh, environment, Georgia has been particularly uh, proactive in terms of pushing forward uh, our uh, new ideas, new initiatives uh, to promote peace, dialogue and trust building uh, among countries of our region and to demonstrate what potential Georgia in this regard has to be creative as it was mentioned several times. As you know, Georgia came with a, an initiative to host a trilateral dialogue platform uh, that would include Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia. And uh, the Prime Minister of Georgia facilitated a very important dialogue and demonstrated that uh, Georgia has a potential to serve that role. In addition to that, and to build on that, uh, the, to build on the initial trilateral platform idea, the Prime Minister of Georgia has, uh, has uh, presented the initiative at the United uh, Nations General Assembly, uh, the Peaceful Neighborhood Initiative. And we see a number of extremely important issues of the common regional interests of the uh, Caucasus countries that uh, Georgia can uh, serve. Uh, that would be beneficial uh, for uh, our region, our countries, but generally for the Black Sea security architecture. Uh, Georgia's main goal remains uh, to support peace and stability in the region. And, and we have strategic partnership with Turkey and Azerbaijan. We have historic uh, good neighborly relations with Armenia and uh, will do support uh, more active engagement of our Western partners in the region. We see only a uh, way to positively affect the political dynamic and counterbalance Russia's to the Russia's aggressive policies in the region. On all the issues, uh, whatever the perceptions are, Georgia remains united uh, internally. And this uh, unity uh, is something that we believe should be very clearly seen and appreciated. Uh, when it comes to our uh, relations with the United States, very recent visit of the uh, Secretary of Defense, the signing of the new memorandum of Georgia's uh, Defense and Deterrence Initiative is a, a very important uh, yet another document that demonstrates the, the decades long uh, partnership that uh, our public uh, very much appreciates. And uh, in this regard, uh, I believe there is a strong unity uh, despite the political polarization in the country. And this unity should be uh, embraced by our partners with advancing our relationship with the EU and NATO to the higher level with the United States at the level of alliance that Georgian public still very strongly supports. And uh, I'm sure with the high hopes uh, for it to happen uh, sooner rather than later. Thank you, Amuka again.
Thank you, Ambassador Bakradze. Uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. There are some um, additional comments and, and uh, questions we cannot address right now, but there's are interesting subjects maybe for our future discussions. One last point I wanted to touch is that at some point we need to have probably a special discussion on, on uh, OSC and uh, CFE treaty and the face of that, if it's still alive or not, because this is a kind of misperception that the United States and other Western allies still follow CFE treaty uh, requirements while Russia and Belarus and others are no longer following this, this, uh, this treaty uh, requirements. And uh, uh, again, because we are discussing legacy of Ambassador Levan Mikeladze uh, and, and uh, OSC summit of 1999, when uh, this CFE treaty amendments were signed, I think coming back to this issue, maybe our next session uh, next year would be, I think, relevant and, and important because I think that platform still may be uh, way out to, from the current crisis uh, because at some point Russia may get interested in this uh, as well because if, if it sees the cost of operation in Ukraine or even this moving troops or keeping troops there or if it, if it, uh, if it uh, escalates to military confrontation, it's not going to be easy on Russia either. That's my obviously uh, opinion on that. It's, it's, it will be heavy burden on Russia as well, both in, from internal politics as well as economic point of view. Uh, but with that, I would like to thank again our uh, keynote speaker, F Fiona Hill, uh, all our uh, guest speakers, uh, Ambassador Bokradze, Ambassador Gekishidze, Dr. Stephen Jones, Dr. Yulia jo Georgia. And uh, am I pronouncing the right way? Okay. And uh, Tina Mikeladze uh, and... Uh, Everybody else, uh, Irina Satiani, who is supporting on the technical side. And uh, thank you, Tina, for... I know it's very late in Georgia for you and Archil, but I'm you so stayed... I'm so sorry, but there was a fire alarm in my oh, hotel really? in Kajeti, <laughs> and I had to run uh, outside. I think Tina is the best place among all of us. She's in the Tinandali, best. in Tinandali, the uh, in, uh, in, uh, where the, in the heart of wine country and... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure she will continue party later on after after this yes. this, this <laughs> event. So thank you, Tina, and uh, give yes. our best regards to the participants of the party as well, uh, yes. from the participants of this conference. <laughs> so with that, I would like to close this uh, this, this year's session of Levan Mikelazi Foundation, and uh, we'll continue next year. I hope so. Thanks, thanks to our audience one more time. Thank you. Thank you, Mamuka, thank you, Mamuka, for, your, for organizing. Thank you for your support and all the participants. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah.